Oh, yeah, dear. You can open the door, Sapphire. This ain't the landlord. Close your eyes, George. I got a big surprise for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Mm hmm. Now keep it close, tight. I'll leave you open. Come on. Now sit down. Okay, you can open your eyes now. Oh, well, uh, what's the surprise? Why, well, you're sitting at it. The new dining room set. Holy smoke. Uh, Where did this come from? I bought it. You said I should buy whatever I wanted for my birthday. And this is what I wanted. Well, when I said that, I was talking about something small, like a dust mop, or a bottle of fingernail polish or something. Uh, what was wrong with the old dining room set? Why, it was just horrible. And besides, I got a wonderful bargain on this. It's only going to cost you $30 a month. $30? Mm -hmm. And I told them you'd be in with the first payment in the morning. Look, honey, I ain't got no $30 to put out. Uh, this stuff got to be going back. Get a chair there. And... Put that down. I'm keeping this dining room set. For years, I haven't been able to have anybody worthwhile for dinner. I was ashamed of that old set. Yeah, anybody worthwhile don't have to come to dinner. They can afford to buy their own. <laughs> I'm talking about intellectual people. Authors, musicians, artists, scientists, people like Professor Adams from the university. Yeah, $30 a month, woman. You're going to bankrupt me. I don't care. Oh, you don't, huh? No, I'm going to have some sparkling conversation at the dinner table for a change. Sparkling conversation? Yes, something besides pass the salt and pass the ketchup. Well, if I don't sparkle it up enough for you, I'll take my conversation elsewhere and eat. And in the words of the sparkling intellect, goodbye. Oh. <laughs> hey, Kingfish. Oh, uh, hello, Andy. Hey, uh, I'd like for you to meet the boys. This is Joe Fritchie. He's a house painter. Uh, how do you do that? I am. And Kingfish, this is Harry Wynn. He runs the newsstand down by the subway. Oh, yeah. Harry, I've seen you before. Yeah, how you been? And this is Eddie Cooper. He repairs jukeboxes around town. Well, I'm glad to know you. Likewise. Well, I guess I'll be getting on over to the counter. I don't want to interrupt nothing. You can sit here. We were just leaving. Yeah, sit Ooh. down there, King. See you tomorrow night, Andy. Yeah. All right, so long, boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't let me keep you, Andy. Uh, I just want to get a hamburger or something. Yeah. Oh, I ain't finished my pie yet. But say, what you doing eating out? Well, me and Cap, I had another financial argument. Oh, one of them things, huh? Eh? Yeah, and you know when I married Sapphire, it was for richer or poor. But it looked like I ain't gonna get no richer, because she always seen out way to make me poor. So, Andy, take my advice and stay happily single. Well, being a bachelor ain't so good either, Kingfish. You see, uh, me and them three fellas is bachelors. We has to eat here every night at this restaurant. I'm sick of it. Well, what do you have to eat here for? There's a lot of other places. Yeah, but it's safer to eat here. Look at that. See, me and the boys each buy us a meal ticket at the beginning of the month. And that way we know we're going to eat every day until payday. Uh, me and the boys got to get our meal tickets for next month. I sure hope I got my $25. $25? Is that what uh, each of you four pay to eat here every night? Yeah. <laughs> Andy? It's a funny coincidence. Are you talking about a meal ticket and I just lining up my new organization? What organization? The SFHMFUB. SFHMFUB? What's that? Society for Home Cooked Meals for Unwed Bachelors. Never heard of it. Well, Andy, I'll be telling you what to do now. Before you fellas buy your meal ticket, why don't you stop by the lodge hall in about an hour from now and I'll explain the whole thing to you. Well, I'll talk it over with the boys. Yeah. Now, let me get this straight, Kingfish. We pay you $25 for the meal ticket. And we get to eat dinner at your house free every night for a month. Well, that's uh, Phil uh, Harmony came up to society. I don't know. <laughs> Is the food at your house any good? Now, look, Harry. When we organize this here society, we scour the neighborhood to get the best of eating for you fellas. And by some strange stroke of fate, my house was rated A1 sauce by Duncan Fife. I can vote. Sapphire ain't no sauce, but you kill it. 
There you is, gentlemen, unsolicited uh, testimony. Sounds good to me. I'll take a meal ticket. Ah, uh, me too. Oh, I'll take one. Count me in there, Kingsley. Mm hmm. Well, uh, here you is, fellas. Here you is. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night at six. Be sure and tell Sapphire we all paid up. Oh, uh, Sapphire, oh, uh, that just reminds me. Now, listen, boys, this is a non-profit sharing organization. And we never discuss money matters with the cook. Well, that takes it out of the non-profit uh, class. Oh, well, we won't say nothing. Right. We'll see you tomorrow night. See you later. Okay. Okay. Well, goodbye, society members. See ya. Don't slam the door when you go out. <laughs> Mmm, six o'clock. How does it look, George? Oh, honey, it looks fine, but you didn't need to go to all the trouble with the decoration. These intellectuals ain't used to no such fancy trimmings as this. Well, I want to make sure they enjoy themselves so they come back again. Oh, don't worry, honey, they'll be back. <laughs> I'll be there now. Now, look all right. Oh, you look fine, honey. Hi, King Fisher. Hello, Hello time. Yeah, yeah. Hello, uh -huh. Hello, well, Sapphire, uh, this is Joe uh, Fritchie, the painter fellow I was telling you about. Please oh, know you. And uh, this is Lady Cooper, the man in the music business. Uh, as well, well, I know you. And this is uh, Harry Wynn, the newspaper man. Hello. Yeah, we brought our good appetites along, Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> they're acting like this is a restaurant. Well, honey, that's the way with them. They are big intellectuals. Why, they don't go in for them social graces and all that sort of stuff. They are non-conformal. <laughs> Oh, so. Well, honey, just put the food on the table, and in a few moments, a conversation will be floating all over the house. <laughs> well, it certainly is nice having all you men up to dinner tonight. Pass the pepper, please. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, I understand you're in the music business. Just what do you play? Oh, anything you want, uh, automatically. <laughs> oh, it must be wonderful to have talent like that. How did you ever learn? Oh, uh, he went to night school, didn't you, Eddie? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pass the salt, please. Surely. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Wynn, as a newspaper man, you must meet lots of interesting personalities. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cab Calloway was up to my place the other day. Oh? Did you get a story from him? Yeah. Did you hear the one about the... Uh... <laughs> Something must have went down the wrong windpipe. All right, what were you saying, Andy? Uh, I didn't say nothing. Can I have another roll? Oh, certainly. Here you are, Mr. Fritchie. Tell us something about your painting. Oh, uh, they keep me busy. Well, what do you paint mostly? Portraits or landscapes? Kitchens. <laughs> Kitchens? Yeah, you know them uh, little baby cats. Well, those are kids. Well, the boy had a uh, roll in his mouth there. You couldn't understand it so good. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cooper, were you at Carnegie Hall the other evening when Heifetz played Brahms? No. Uh, who won? Oh! <laughs> there you're sparkling stuff, Delphi. <laughs> um, I suppose you're syndicated, Mr. Wynn. No, but I've been vaccinated. <laughs> This is I got to get a pencil to write some of this stuff down. <laughs> uh, Mr. Fritchie, do you care for Picasso? Nah, I'm gonna skip this late. That was a good meal, Mr. Stevens. Well, I got a date. I'll be seeing you. Me yeah. too. Yep, I gotta go too. Well, thanks for everything, Sapphire. Well, so long, boys. <laughs> well. Well, I feel mentally invigorated. I don't know why. Well, you should too. You always said you wanted the intellectuals here. They are not my idea of intellectuals. Well, they are mine, and I'm going to invite them same four fellas back here tomorrow night. Oh, no, you're not. They're not eating here tomorrow night or ever again. Huh. The Amos and Andy show continues in a moment. What made Milwaukee change its mind? What made Milwaukee change its mind? Hello, I'm Rex Marshall. Yes, the big beer question these days is, what made Milwaukee change its mind about beer? Well, if you like Milwaukee beer, I guess everybody knows it's the best beer in America, 
I'm sure that you'll be mighty interested in the answer. What made Milwaukee change its mind? Well, I tell you, let's ask a man from Milwaukee. He ought to know. Yes, I certainly do know. And I'll tell you all about it. You know, this is the city where almost all the fine, world-famous beers are brewed. Over the years, more and more people, right here in Milwaukee, have come to realize that Blatt is the finest of all the fine beers. That's why today, in these modern times, Blatt is Milwaukee's favorite beer by far. Yes, there's no doubt about it. The flavor of Blatt is what made Milwaukee change its mind about beer. The Milwaukee Journal proves it in black and white. You know, every year, this newspaper makes a citywide survey on beer preferences and publishes the results. Now, see for yourself how Blatt has been preferred by Milwaukee year after year after year. And take a look at this. Nowadays, Milwaukee prefers Blatt by an even greater margin. You know, winning an honor like that year after year after year in America's beer capital is certainly the greatest possible tribute to the flavor of any beer. Don't you agree? So the next time you order beer, remember it's so easy to enjoy Milwaukee's favorite beer. Just be sure that you ask for Black, Milwaukee's favorite beer, Milwaukee's finest beer. Here you are. Thank you. Okay. Oh, hi, J.B. Oh, hi, Amos. Ah, uh, you bought that house of flowers? Yeah, just a 35 cent deluxe bouquet. Uh, what is it, a piece of... Yeah, just a few posies to stew along the rocky road of matrimony. Yeah, well, that's a good idea, all right. I say, Kingfish, Andy was telling me how you and Sapphire was feeding a group of bachelor fellas. Yeah, he must be doing our bit to help the national heartburn. No, I think it's wonderful of Sapphire to put herself out that way. Oh, she put out all right. <laughs> well, he must have better be getting these flowers home. Must be seeing it, son. Yeah, I see you, Kingfish. Yes, Professor Adam. Well, I'm very sorry you can't make a definite dinner date with us, but um, suppose we leave it like this. The first night, you're free. Just call us, and then you come right on over. Oh, it'll be no trouble at all. I'm looking forward to seeing you. All right, goodbye. George. Hello, honey. I got a little surprise for you. For me? Oh, thank you. Well, don't thank me. That's just a little croquet of depreciation from them four intellectuals minus Andy that was here last night. Oh, Ben. Now, Sapphire, that ain't no way to act. They just want to show you how they enjoyed being here last night and how they're looking forward to joining us again tonight. We're not having those phony intellectuals. If we have anyone again, it'll be Professor Adam. Well, there's no point in letting the table go to waste while we are waiting on him. Now, these four fellas... No, and that's my final word. Now, go get ready for dinner. Well, what we having for dinner? Pot roast. Well, you got enough in case I want second, third, fourth, and fifth. There's enough. <laughs> Ten minutes to six. George? Oh, yeah, yeah, honey. Those friends of yours soiled my best tablecloth. Would you take this laundry up on the roof and hang it on the line, please? Yes, my dear. There's been a little difference made in the arrangement here. What do you mean? We're going to eat, aren't we? Oh, sure, and I got a special treat for you boys tonight. Uh, kind of warm, ain't it? Yeah, it's so bad. Well, they got a hot in the apartment there. 
You know the oven going all day cooking that big pot roast for you fellas? And so I done fixed it so we can eat up on the roof garden. What roof garden? Well, up on the roof, Dandy, you know what's cool and the breeze wafting around? Ah, oh, step this way. I don't want to eat on the roof. Well, now, that's part of the itinerary of the society. Well, uh, we break up the monotony for you. One night we eat in the apartment, and the next night we eat up on the roof garden, and uh, next night, uh, who knows where we eat? I don't care where we eat, as long as I eat. All right, follow me on up the steps. <laughs> well, there he is, boys. Make yourself comfortable and chew on the breadsticks. Yeah, this roof is hard. Oh, but when that big pot roast come up, you're going to forget all of that. When is that going to get here? Well, now, uh, in a few minutes, you all uh, lower the basket down, and I filled it up, then you haul it back up again. And as they say in France, I'm appetite, boys. <laughs> we need anything else, we'll come down and get it. Oh, yeah. in the bedroom. <laughs> you want to change, all right. <laughs> oh, honey, uh, water glass empty. Uh, would you mind uh, filling that for me again? Somebody calling you. 
everybody out here. Hmm. Say, George, you want your coffee now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are starting to do something. Hey, take this and start coming up. Do something. It's going to rain. We're going to get through. Hey, put something in the basket. You ain't seen Andy. But we had a misunderstanding here last night. Uh, uh, look, Calhoun, if you see Andy, you tell him I done left town. Yeah, a big mining deal. Yeah, I had to take a load of coal to Newcastle. Uh, thanks, Calhoun. I'm not inconveniencing you. I ran into Mrs. Stevens and she insisted that I join you for dinner. Oh, no. We're glad to have you. Now, you two men just make yourself comfortable and I'll have dinner on the table in no time. My, it's going to be so nice. Just the three of us. We'll have some real sparkling conversation. Yeah, have a seat there, Professor. Kingfish! Kingfish! <laughs> Wherever you is, he's not in there. And after last night, he'd better hide. It's nearly supper time. Let's go up to the farmer. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Well, tell me, boys, what's the Emily Post of the situation? Shall we eat and then probably the kingfish, or shall we pop him in dinner? Let's eat, man. Yeah. Your work must be so fascinating, Professor. What do you teach? Medieval history. Oh, yeah. That meat had a fascinating history, all right. A <laughs> <Our> pastor's foot. <laughs> No, honey, uh, uh, that's the back door. I go see who it is. Kingfish done sold us all meal tickets. Meal tickets? Yeah, you remember the SFHMFUB? No, what is it? Well, it's run by Sapphire and the Kingfish here. Society for home cooked meals for unwed bachelors. If you're a bachelor, you better get in on it because the meals are great. Do you mean George sold you tickets to eat here in our house? We paid him 25 bucks a piece to eat here for a month. Yeah, he said the bachelors wasn't eating right and they ought to have home cooked meals and you were doing this as a public favor. the most unusual thing I have ever heard of. Yeah. It has stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Kingfish, after giving the situation due consideration, I have at last arrived at a definite conclusion. Well, what's that, Calhoun? You is in a bad mess. <laughs> Calhoun, I don't need you to tell me that. I've been up here all night and all day today, and now it's six o'clock. <laughs> That's Kingfish, but you got to go down sometime. Yeah, Calhoun, but the question is, how do I get down? Do I walk down or jump? <laughs> Kingfish, the only thing for you to do is go down that way to Sapphire and plead insanity. Insanity? <laughs> Absolutely. 
To do what you done done, a man has to be out his mind. I'd like to get in with this sparkling group. Well, George, there isn't any room for you. And besides, do you have a meal ticket? A meal ticket? <laughs> Why, this is my home and I'm entitled to eat here. Well, yes, you're right about that. And considering all you've done, you deserve a special place. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, sapphire. Why do I have to eat out here? I'll have you know that I am the president and founder of this society. Oh, yes, you are, Mr. President. And when you're finished eating... Yes? You can wash all these dishes. 